Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing on this Sunday afternoon? I hope all is well. I haven't been with you guys for a few days, but I'm back today. And today, um, I'm going to be cooking my Sunday dinner. But I'm going to show you all how to make my dad's pigeon peas and rice. Okay, but before we get started with that... <coughs> I want to welcome each and every new subscriber to my channel. Thank you for subscribing to Joy's Kitchen. If you're scrolling through YouTube or you happen to land on my channel and you're checking out my videos, go ahead and subscribe. I would really appreciate it, okay? And I thank you in advance. So, and be sure when you subscribe to hit that notification bell. So every time I upload one of these recipes, you'll want to be notified, okay? So I thank you all for in advance for subscribing to my channel. And the ones that recently subscribed, welcome to Join's YouTube family. It's great to have you guys. All right. Now, today's recipe, my Sunday's dinner, is going to be pigeon peas and rice. I'm doing um, cornbread and strained beans. I'm doing Cajun strained beans with potatoes and sausage. And I'm doing um, pot roast. I have two pot roasts that I'll be frying and, um, on the stove top and I'll be making a gravy to it. I'm not putting it in the oven today. I'm just going to let it cook slow and low on top of the stove, okay? I'm going to let it do what it do. I'm going to season it up. I'm going to add my veggies to it. Um, I don't think I got no carrots. I gotta check. If I ain't got no carrots, we just gonna be doing that. And I just left from the stove, so I'm not going back to the stove. So if I ain't got no carrots, I'm gonna use what I got, okay? That's my motto. Use what you got. If you ain't got substitute, or use what you got until you get it, okay? So I'm gonna show y'all not how to do the rest of my dinner. It's just gonna be a focus on the pigeon peas and rice. So we're gonna get started. And this is a great dish. Like I said previously in one of my videos, um, I grew up eating pigeon peas and rice. Like I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. I'm from Florida. But when my father passed away in 79, um, my, mom, my aunt called my mom and said, Nitty, it's just you and the kids down there. Now you ain't got no family down there. Come on back home. So we moved to another part of Florida. So I'm here and I've been here since 79. So with that said, my dad, I, I don't remember much of my dad's recipes, but I do remember him cooking. My mom's, I can, t I can go through all my mom's recipes, okay? But my dad, I don't remember much of his. Nothing but this pigeon peas and rice, because we used to eat it all the time. And if I didn't tell you, those of us knew, my dad passed away. He had a um, heart attack, and then he survived it. While he was in the hospital, he had a heart attack at home. He left home, went to the hospital. Um, we was in church at that time. But anyway, my dad passed away of a heart attack. And um, this pigeon peas and rice is on my dad. It's just a dish that I loved as a kid. And I still like it today as an adult. And I'm going to share my pigeon peas, my dad's pigeon peas and rice with you all. Um, my dad used to be a chef, so that's why I probably I like cooking so much. I'm no chef, but I love to cook. And that's why I probably come up with these crazy, these different ideas of cooking and adding stuff and taking away stuff away from Because probably with my dad, my dad used to be a chef. So, this is his dish. And so, we're doing pigeon peas and rice. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what you're going to need for this dish. And... My dad used to eat, use water for this dish, okay? But I'm substituting for that. See, I do this dish like it's supposed to do. And then, like it's supposed to be done. And then I twerk it a little bit. Which means I change it around a little bit, okay? So my dad's way, he used water. My way, I'm using chicken broth. But it's still his ingredients. I just changed from water to chicken broth because I thought chicken broth would give it a better flavor. But when I was younger and I was doing it with water, it was damn good, okay? And it still is. So if you want to use water, go ahead. So, um, but I'm using chicken broth today, okay? So let's get started for the recipes. Let me show you guys what you'll need for my dad's pigeon peas and rice with a little twerk. Twerk. Okay, you're gonna need a bowl, okay? 
We're gonna, I got this part here because I'm gonna put some rice in here. You're gonna need the long grain rice, okay? Long grain. You can't use your success rice for this, okay? You want the long grain rice, okay? So you're gonna need a bowl, you're gonna need a knife. The first ingredient you're gonna need is you're gonna need an onion, okay? You're gonna need a small onion. I'm not gonna use this whole onion. So I'm gonna use a little bit, half of it, and then I'm gonna put the rest like in my string beans and stuff, okay? So you're gonna need an onion. You're gonna need some garlic. Now you can use fresh garlic. I just didn't feel like doing too much chopping, so I'm using minced garlic, okay? You're gonna need Goya coconut milk, okay? Followed by two cans of pigeon peas and rice. Yes, I'm using all both cans of pigeon peas and rice, okay? And here's the other can of green pigeon peas. That's what you're gonna need by Goya, green pigeon peas, okay? And you're gonna use two cans or you can use one can. And you're gonna need some oregano, dry, and you're gonna need some kosher salt. Okay, if you wanna use water, go ahead. But I'm using chicken broth. And you're gonna need two and a half cups of chicken broth, okay? So that's what I have in here, two and a half cups of chicken broth. So, I have my pan here, and we're going to get started with our pigeon peas and rice. So, I'm just going to cut my iron, and we're going to get started chopping up the onion. So, while that's getting hot, I'm going to try to chop up some of this onion right quick, okay? Because I'm going to put some onion in here, along with some garlic. Okay, I'm back, y'all. I had to go get some gloves and put on. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my onion off that I'm using. Now I'm just gonna start. I'll turn y'all back over this way, okay? I'm just start chopping up my onion. I need a big knife. And you want to chop it up kind of fine, okay? This is all the onion that we're gonna need. And you see, I didn't even use a half an onion. I just sliced it right there. I didn't even use a half an onion, okay? So you don't need that much for your rice. Unless you just like onions, I like them too, but you don't need that much in your rice. Cause I'm gonna have onions in the rest of my recipes. Everything you guys that I'm cooking today, I'm gonna have onions in it. So you want to dice it up, kind of, kind of fine, okay? You don't want to get no ch chunks, okay?
Okay, so we'll turn y'all back over here to the pot. To my frying pan, rather. And we're gonna get this pot started. Okay. So we have that getting good and hot. You're gonna need some olive oil. We're gonna take our olive oil, sprinkle it in our pan. We're gonna take one teaspoon of butter and just go in there. That's all you need is just one teaspoon, okay? One tablespoon, I mean, of butter. So we're gonna put our oil in, I mean our onions in. take now you only need that's one tablespoon one you only need one tablespoon okay but since I only have like a tablespoon left I'm not gonna stick a tablespoon of garlic back in my refrigerator okay so I'm gonna use the second tablespoon Teaspoon, teaspoon. That's just to be crying. Be wrong for that. <laughs> okay, that all kind of make no sense. So you just go ahead and use. Okay, then we just stir it all like this right here. And we're going to cook this for about three minutes. I'll turn it on after a while. Where our onions can get translucent. Okay? And you're going to stir it around for three minutes, three whole minutes. So it's 310. So I'm going to do this to three what? 13. Okay. Now you want to continue to stir it around because you don't want your garlic to burn. I did it. Well, I'm gonna have to. I didn't mean to do this in this frying pan. I meant to do it in the pot that I'm gonna cook the rice in. But I'll just pour it in now. Okay, y'all. One more minute. Smelling right now, it is smelling so good. I just love garlic. I love it. 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 I love garlic. So you're gonna continue to stir and stir and stir until your three minutes is up. You don't want your garlic to burn. You want to add all this, this onions and garlic to be nice and well combined. All right, that's our 313. So, I'm going to take you guys over here. And I'm just gonna dump this right 
into this bowl. You know what, guys? I'm wrong for that. Okay. So I'm going to put this back in here because I didn't season it. And I got to season it. So here's my oregano. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm wrong for that. So here's my oregano. My oregano. And my kosher salt. I'm glad I caught that. Okay, so we're going to add it back into the bowl. Now we're going to add it back into the bowl for the second time. So that's our oregano. Our kosher salt. Our onion. And our mini scarf. Two cups of rice. However, it takes to feed your family, okay? And I'm gonna rinse my rice off. And you wanna rinse it until your water runs clear, okay? I take out a little bit of that water. So, to this, let you guys see what we're gonna do to the rice. I'm gonna drain this water off this rice a little bit more because I don't want it too wet. Too much liquid in it. I just want this amount that's supposed to be in there. Because you want it to come out right. 
Okay. Can y'all see that part of rice? To that, I'm going to add in the onions, the garlic, the oregano, and the salt that I just did. Okay. So let's combine that. Okay, I'm going to open up the can of pigeon peas and rice. And we're going to drain that, okay? Okay, so that's one can. I think one can might be enough. I just love pigeon peas and rice. This is enough, one can. So, I can use the other can for another meal. Okay, we're going to add in a can of milk into this. We're adding in our coconut milk. You're going to use the whole can for that, okay? I have my stove on high heat. Then we're going to add in the two and a half cups of beef broth I mean chicken um, broth okay and that was low sodium chicken broth okay so you see guys see how that look so we're gonna let that come to a boil can you guys see that so that's what it looks like we're gonna let it come to a boil I'm gonna put it on the stove let it come to a boil and then I'm gonna reduce it so here's my eye over here. So let me sit that on the stove. Let it come to a boil. And you want to be stern, okay?
Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get started with the rest of my dinner. Um, I'm not going to do that much talking because I'm just cooking, okay? So, and then I'll come back and um, tell you what we're going to continue to do with what we're going to do next with our pigeon peas and rice, okay? So right now I'm letting it come to a boil and I'm going to stir it while I'm trying to get my meat on, okay? So, I'm not going to be any talking, so y'all just look, okay? I usually add um, sour cream to this, but I don't have any today. So for a homemade cornbread from scratch, you'll need 
cornmeal, yellow or white. I, I like white, but I will use the yellow. So either or, um, self-rising flour, a half a cup of vegetable oil, or you can use old cooking grease. A half a cup, sugar, one egg. Mix it together. to boil. Let me make some dish water. This is my dishes are accumulating in my sink. And I need to get rid of them. So my rice is starting to boil. Take this and put it in. Well, it ain't ready yet. So that's going to go in a 350 degree oven. It smells so good. Okay, so I'm putting my cornbread in the oven. Now, no more talking. I'm stirring it. I'm going to put the top on and just let it cook.
bring y'all a little closer. Thank <laughs> you. 
Cajun season. Creole seasoning. Kosher salt. Light pepper. And a little cap full of, of um, grease. Let me see, I did something. Cut the wrong aisle. That's what I did. Okay, back on the meat. I'm doing the stove top today instead of letting it um, sit in the oven. Celery.
telling about potatoes. I'm gonna cut me some onions up in there. Y'all see how that cornbread came out? It's done. So only thing I'm gonna be waiting on is the meat. Um, that's gonna be another hour or so because we gotta let that get good and tender. Okay, so I'm just throwing a little, um, pouring a little thickening agent in it, and I use cornstarch and water just to thicken this gravy up. And go ahead and let it cook. And there's that gravy, and it's gonna get it's gonna get um darker due to us frying the meat, and then dipping it in this water here. So I'm gonna cover this. And let that go ahead on the cook. And when this dinner, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and um, butter my cornbread. Y'all see the cornbread? See that? I'm gonna go ahead and butter that. And I'm going to bring this to an end and let this meat simmer for about the next hour or two. And we'll be through with our dinner.
You can see the pigeon peas and rice. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and let that cook a little bit more. But there's our pigeon peas and rice. So if you like that recipe, give it a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe to Joanne's Kitchen. So I'm going to let my um, pot roast come to a boil. I'm going to cover that back up. Cover my rice back up. Do my... Um, put a, um, some butter over my rice. I mean, put some butter over my cornbread. Excuse me. I'm going to butter my cornbread. Put my top on the, my pot roast. And let that simmer for the next good two hours until my meat. It's good and tender. So I'll see you guys in a couple of hours. Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? I'm back. It's done been a little minute, y'all. Y'all know I got up. It was like, when I started cooking, shoot, what time it was? It was, not then, I don't forget what time it was, y'all. I done fixed me a sausage sandwich. I got tired of waiting on my own dinner to get done, y'all. I done fixed me a sausage sandwich. Because I wanted this meat to cook for a long time. It's been cooked a long time now. I'm finally turning the stove off after 6 o'clock. We ain't ate dinner. But I did fix me a sausage sandwich. It's something to get me through until dinner time. You know what I mean? But y'all ain't got to let y'all cook that long. I cooked on top of the stove and I cooked it slow. And I cooked it long, slow and long. Okay, let me show y'all what I got here. Y'all take a look over here at this plate. Let me show y'all what I got. I'm gonna put it together. Pigeon peas and rice. I got some of this good old for the, this good old gravy over here in this pot here with this pot roast in it. But I don't want to put no pot roast, no gravy on my um. Uh -oh. Hello. Uh, fixing my plate on my video. What's up? He finna go get some what? Oh, okay. Okay. And then how much you going how much you want for it? Oh, okay. But I'm talking about how much you be doing. How much you be telling him? Yeah, I, I know. Okay. All right. Later. All right, sorry about that, y'all. So, this is my pigeon peas. But this is how the pigeon peas look like. This, well, this is what the pigeon peas look like. This was the this is what I was showing trying, um showing y'all how to make the pigeon peas and rice. Okay. So if y'all like this, give me a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe to Joyce Kitchen. I thank you all. Now I'm gonna fix the rest of my plate. I think I might have to put some gravy on this one, huh? Cause um. And y'all, guess what? I'm gonna show y'all over here in this pot of this pot roast. I told y'all I got to find me something. No, um, hold my camera up so I won't be having y'all going to the left, to the right, back to the left. You know what I mean? 
I just wish there was something I can hang or something. I gotta, I just gotta get to the name of the store because I gotta find something where you, it just can take my whole kitchen. I don't want nobody standing up there holding the camera because my turn now, sometimes they just don't be holding it right. And, um, I can't hold it with one hand and cook with the other hand, so I have to put it on the stand. Then when I get ready to turn over here towards the sink, I got to turn y'all to the left. When I get ready to come back over here to the stove, I got to turn you back to the stove. So I'm sorry for all that twisting and turning. I just got to find something that just can take everything to show everything what I'm doing when I'm doing when I'm cook, doing the cooking thing. You know what I mean? But until then, I appreciate y'all for bearing with me. Now this is my pot roast, okay? I did go back and I took the pot roast because you know um, I had two of them in here, right? And um, I ain't want us to be trying to cut the meat off with the gravy, and then somebody end up burning themselves or the or the gravy end up jumping out the pot. Cause um, you know after you cut it and you be trying to cut it and then the gravy just come out the pot I ain't want that to happen there goes some of my potatoes right here see this been cooking for a little minute it's after 6 o'clock I think I put it on it was like 12 something or 1 something oh, it's been cooking for about 5 hours I said 2 or 3 but 5 got it nice and tender y'all see how good that look so I went back and just took my um my um whole um pot roast put it on the plate and with the dice in that bad boy and just cut it up so everybody just can get them a little piece instead of somebody just coming up trying to burn themselves god knows i don't have enough burn stains to last me a little minute now i'm trying to get burned no more Got burned on the goddamn gun. I was doing something and burnt myself. A grease splat all on my stomach. And burnt my stomach. Ooh. Okay. So I just went back and did it like that, y'all. Okay, I'm gonna turn y'all back over here because I'm gonna get some of these, um, turn y'all back to the product. I'm finna get some, put some of these pigeon peas, I mean not pigeon peas, some of these strain beans, the Cajun strain beans and sausage. I'm finna put some of that on the plate now. Let me see, can I find some more potatoes going, huh? Because there ain't but a few. Potatoes done got tore up in here. Huh? I had quite a few of them. I didn't got lost. <laughs> oh Lord. You turn that fan off. So I'm gonna put a um some of these Cajun string beans on here. Strings and beans and potatoes. Cajun style. And some of this homemade cornbread. I gotta go to Dr. Tuesday, y'all. And um, and after my doctor's appointment, I'm off Tuesday and Wednesday. Yep, I just took some time off. Even though I just came back off of vacation not too long ago. It's time for another little break. You know how I mean. You know how I get some time. You just get tired. And then they need to rest a little bit. So it's time for another little two days off. And after that, they got my cornbread, y'all. I go back to work Wednesday. I mean, um, not Wednesday, Thursday. I work Thursday, Friday, and I'm off again Saturday and Sunday. So I'll be working until I feel like getting up some more days. But then I use my PTO days, y'all know. All right. 
show y'all this right here. Okay, there we have it, folks. My homemade cornbread, um, Cajun string beans with potatoes and sausage, pot rolls, pigeon peas and rice. Well, right now I got them covered in some gravy with a little bit, a few petite, um, pieces of potatoes on top. It's a good dinner. Like, share, and subscribe if you like this recipe. Let me taste. It. Let me do a taste test right quick. Mm. Yeah, them pigeon peas and rice good. I know they was gonna be good. I like pigeon peas and rice. No. Yeah. Cajun string beans and sausage and potatoes. Y'all try this recipe. You can use fresh um string beans, or you just can do it the quick way and get you some good old fashioned canned string beans. Fry, dice you up some sausage, fry, put your potatoes in there. You can go ahead and cut you some onions up in there if you want some onions up in there. Hell, it even just be nice with some bell peppers up in there. And then pull your um after you got it all fried and your meat look nice and brown. Go ahead and pull your string beans in there. The water and all. The whole everything in the string beans. Just pull the can right on in the pot. How many um cans of string beans you plan on cooking? Just pour them right on in there. Put your kosher salt, your black pepper, your Cajun seasoning, and don't forget that um chili powder and um that um Tony's Creole season and mix that bad baby up. Put your little oil in there, vegetable oil in there, and let it simmer. You got yourself some Cajun string beans and sausage and potatoes, and they damn sure taste good. I ain't gonna lie. This was one of the side items that I sold when I was doing my dinners. I sold out, y'all. My whole not just occasion string bean. My whole dinner sold out. Y'all, this is good. I oh, thank y'all. And thank y'all for watching. Um, I'm getting ready to close it now. Thank y'all for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to Joanne's Kitchen. Thank y'all so much for watching. My new subscribers, welcome. And I thank you all. God bless. I love you all. Until the next recipe, God bless. And I'll see you guys with another recipe.